What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to Ebbs Fleet United. So here we are at the end of our first season in the Premier League, also the end of our sixth season in the game. Were we able to achieve the position, or a minimum achieve, at minimum achieve the position I wanted, which was around mid-table, or did we end up making that push for Europe? Did we end up falling away from the grade, end up trying to battle to survive? Um, those are questions that were pretty much left with us last time. And let's jump into the league table and have a look. So... Come the end of our first ever season in the Premier Division at the peak of English football, we finished 8th place. And overall, I'm pretty chuffed with that. If you look at the teams above us, they're all big teams. Teams that have the, have the foundation to be big clubs in Europe. Uh, big clubs in, yeah, big clubs in Europe, let alone the Premier League. You know, they all have great stadiums, big financial backings, things like that. So for us to finish 8th behind all of them teams, I'm really happy with. Because I'd say we're then the best team above the rest. You know, to overcome a team like Southampton as well, that's a really good achievement. Um, and overall, I wouldn't say we're too far off maybe making that push for Europe next season, which again is such a massive thing because, in a matter of fact, we can you could realistically say that we were only six points off about uh, six points off Arsenal, and that all right, technically that wasn't a European spot, but then you know because of the cup winners were a different, um, but you know you could say that realistically, you know, on a, on a different season. That could have been a European spot. And even then, you know, seven points. We're only seven points off of Manchester City, which was a European spot. So we're, we're really close to, you know, getting these, you know, Europa League spots. We're still a bit off the Champions League, as you see, 80 points of Tottenham in third. You know, it's quite a big jump. But still, you know, we've done a, we've done really well for our first season. You know, very respect, really respectable position. And, um, yeah, so let's look at, you know, how the in-depth how we did. So goal scored. Uh, we... Well, one of the best, we were the fourth best in the league, or drawn fourth best in the league with Newcastle. So we were one of the best teams in the league for scoring goals, which is, uh, you know, suiting what we've done in the lower divisions, showing that we've, all throughout the leagues, we can score goals. That's not the trouble. But again, defensively, we were very, very weak. The fifth worst defence in the league. And for that reason alone, we threw away a chance of playing in Europe. Because if we're scoring enough goals to get ourselves a fourth place finish, you know, really, we shouldn't be conceding that many goals. So, you know, we've got to improve next season defensively a lot. If we're going to improve going forward as well, of course, that would be really beneficial because that way, you know, we can cover up the cracks in defence, you know, cover up the fact that we have a really weak defence. But it, we will need to really improve drastically defensively. And I've actually signed another goalkeeper, which I, of course, go into as well. He came, uh, I think in January he came. Uh, so, let's have a look at, we'll look at past positions, I didn't do this for the last few years, we'll look at past positions, we'll click on 8th place, as you can see we're a pretty mid-table team throughout the whole season, just at the end there we managed to nick 8th place off Southampton, so overall I'm pretty happy with that, um, you know, we showed consistency in, our, in terms of our positions, okay, our consistency in terms of results wasn't there, but we stayed roughly in the same space all season long, you know, we never lingered around the relegation zone, Okay, we were never up in the European zones either, but we were in a good position to show that we, you know, throughout the whole season we were going to be secure and we were going to survive. So, and that, you know, in the first season of the Premier League, that is ideally what you want. Okay, you could ask for more, but as long as you stay away from that relegation zone all season long, you'd be pretty happy, and so am I. So let's go into transfers and have a look at who we brought in in January, and also have a little look at who we're going to be bringing in next season. So uh, go to the outs first, and we loaned out a few more players. Um, and then we're going into next season. But I'll, I'll talk about the guys we brought in for the uh, rest of this season. Which is only one player. And it's Luis La La Laranas. Laranas? I don't really know how to pronounce that again. I'm butchering these guys' names. We'll call him Luis. Uh, Luis, 21 years of age, Chilean goalkeeper. And this guy is an incredible goalkeeper. I think he is going to be one of the best goalkeepers in the, in the league, definitely. As you see, he's a star Premier Division goalkeeper right now. Right at this very moment. And for us to pick him up for a very small fee, in my opinion, opinion of 2.5 million of Werder Bremen, I think it is an incredible capture. And okay, he hasn't done too well in his first six months here, but we have to remember that he did play the first half of the season in the second division in Germany. Um, and also the fact that he's still pretty young, he's still, of course, got to adapt to a new language, new culture. He's been South American, haven't played in Germany. You know, it's going to take some time for him to adapt. He still only speaks Spanish. So, you know, he's, he's not even learned English yet. So, hopefully, next season, you know, with an off-season here, 
and you know with a preseason here as well next season he can improve and do a little bit better of course defensively i still think we're very weak so of course we can improve that defense in front of him hopefully he'll put in some better performances but that was the only guy we brought in before the end of the season um and the rest were going into next season so we'll talk about the outs going into next season right now uh first guy we let leave was palawski for one million pounds he was wasn't happy that he wasn't getting enough first team football and it, it you know i was fine with him letting it i was fine letting him go because of course we have um we have him here, Larinus as well. We have Larinus. We have um, God, I can't think of. Yeah, when well, we had him as well. Uh, but the thing is, he was he dropped out of the first team because Larinus came in. Now, for that reason, Larinus uh, just took his spot, and that meant he completely dropped out of the first team. As you can see, he probably don't, I don't think he improved. I think he maybe played a few more games before Larinus came in, and that was it. So of course he's going to complain. Of course he's going to moan because he he's been our first choice keeper for again about a year, two half seasons. Uh, so as a result, or two full, uh, two one and a half seasons. So as a result, you know, he wanted out, and I said, "Fine, I'll get you off as quick as possible." And he went to Wolves for one million pounds. So pretty happy with the fee we picked up there. Next guy, Sadie left. Um, again, I wasn't really happy with this guy. Look at that, fifteen appearances, zero goals. I just wanted to get rid of him as soon as I could, as soon as possible. Only picked up one hundred k, which I think is a very small fee, and actually um, could have probably got a better fee. Where is he currently at now? League. He's in the top division in France, so I do feel that we, we we didn't get the best fee off him there. But with a record like that, it was going to be hard for me to pick up anywhere near a decent fee. You know, his value, real realistically, value. He's realistically his value is going to plummet. Next guy, Hendry, he left for was it two hundred and fifty k? Yep, two hundred fifty k to Barnsley. Uh, this guy was only ever brought in as a backup for this season, and again, I, he wasn't really needed here, so I decided, you know what, let him go, see what we can get for him, and 250k, I'm pretty happy with, it's a decent fee, uh, he's gone to a level that he's probably again more suited for, which is the championship, he was never going to be a Premier League left back. And the last two people to leave, quite big people, actually, I think it's a record ever fee we received for a player in backer, he's gone to Vitesse for £7.5 million which is such a big fee for a club that, again, it's only six years ago, we're, we're happy to pick up about a K for a player. He's had an incredible first season in the Premier League, 37 appearances, 15 goals, 10 assists. And you may be wondering why I decided to sell him. And uh, that is because of the people that I've actually brought in. You know, you can clearly see the striker there, Jordan Rhodes. We'll go into him a bit more in a second. I decided I'd get rid of Backer. And again, this may confuse some people because he was young. He had potential. He could have become a really good player. But... I was happy to let this guy go, pick up the fee we did for him, and bring in Jordan Rhodes, someone who I feel is proven at this level and someone that I know can do the job. Okay, Backer did it for one year, but is he going to do it consistently for a few years? I do not know. So overall, I'm not too fast that we we, we sold him to 7.5 million. If it turns out Rhodes is abysmal and Backer is becomes a beast of a test and ends up returning to the Premier League, okay, that's my bad. You know, that's something that I'll have to have to try and move on with. And if he's scoring goals against us, I'll have to deal with that as well. But for now, I think this is a good bit of um, good bit of dealing here because we have picked up seven point five million for him. We brought Jordan Jordan Rhodes in his prime for five point seven five million. So you know, a bit of profit between the, the buying and selling of two positions there. Plus, I feel Jordan Rhodes could do a better job. And the last guy we decided to let leave was Sandro Wieser for one point seven million. He's joining Peterborough in the Championship. He was a very good player for us in the Championship, not so much in the Premier League. And as a result, I didn't really want to keep him here. Uh, so one point seven million, I think, again, is a really really healthy fee to pick up for him um so overall again i'm happy with the fee we received and plus it helped us pay for some of these new players we've been bringing in so we'll talk about the three players we brought in going into next season first guy we brought in was fabio de prella who 28 years of age left back from switzerland uh, as you see from his report it is very good and the left back position was a massive worry we could only get really one half decent left back at the start of last season so that was something i really wanted to sort out, sort out asap if i could this year and that's what De Prelo brought to us. He was someone I saw there and I thought, that's very good. I want to bring him in. Played in Serie A pretty much since the game started. So, uh, you know, no doubt he's got experience at the top levels. Uh, not played particularly well in any of these seasons, but hopefully moving to the Premier League, we can get him, you know, maybe playing in a system more suited for him, whatever. And hopefully he'll put in some better performances. But De Prelo there, 2.5 million, over, no, not 2.5, 2.7 million, sorry. Overall, I think that's a decent fee for a decent player. And, uh, you know, I think we could definitely send him on for a little bit more if need be. Uh, next guy, Nathaniel Shalaba from Swansea, 24 years of age, so he's now entering the prime of his career. This guy's got really incredible stats. Swansea were relegated, and I was looking to try and raid them, uh, if we're on Swansea. 
Uh, they are they got relegated. I was trying. I'm still trying to sign John Joe Shelby, but he's just out of my price range. Twenty two point five million pounds. Uh, but he would be someone I would extremely love to get. Uh, he has just got such great stats, such great, uh, you know, good, a good report, great uh, attributes right here, really good passing, composure, creativity, determination. Overall, John Joe Shelby would be a great player, and he's played really well for Swansea in the Premier League. So, shame he's out of my price range. I will continue to try and buy him, you know, see if I can find way ra ways around his, you know, ways around his value by adding on fees and things like that. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be a thing that's going to happen. But either way, Shalabar, 4.8 million. He came in and, again, good report on him. Good Premier League player. Has potential still to become a star Premier League player. He's 24, so his development stage is or his development uh, is going to slow down quite a bit now. But overall, I, I think this guy is going to be a really good player for us. Had his best season so far in the Premier League last year for Swansea. Uh, so, hopefully, you know, he can... With us, with a better team surrounding him, because of course Swansea got relegated, with a better team surrounding him, he'll put in some better performances. And the fact that he can play, you know, he's, he's going to be either an attacking player or a defensive player, in my opinion. I'm really happy with Shalabar, which means I can play him either side of the centre midfield partnership. And the last guy we signed, or the most recent guy we signed, is Jordan Rhodes, 5.75 million pounds, 29 years of age. So he is in his prime still, I'd say. Um, Pocho has still got all his stats, still physically there. He's still technically, and you know, mentally and technically, he's still got it. Uh, really good finishing and composure. Exactly what you want in a player. Didn't have a good year last year, but again, Swansea got relegated, so I'll allow that. But apart from that, he's had some great years in the Premier League in the past. So hopefully, again, surrounded by some better players, we can get him back onto his scoring ways and Jordan Rose can become the player that he's been in the past. So excited to see how Jordan Rose can do. He is um, going to be our leading man next season going forward. So hopefully, he can score a lot of goals and the goals that we need to help us take us to that maybe next level and push for Europe. Uh, elsewhere, Transfer Centre, uh, you see we're trying to sign a few more players. People have been rejected. Uh, we've got Wang Jai join him. Kozmanovic, 31 years of age, centre midfielder. This guy is very experienced playing in the um, Turkish League, playing in Syria, playing in the Russian Premier League. Experience all around Europe. So hopefully with him coming in to the Premier League, the league he's never played in before, which is quite strange considering of all the, all the European leagues he's played in in the past. Hopefully him coming in, he can offer a... A very good rock and experienced player, maybe someone that can tutor the boys as well. Overall, uh, I'm really looking forward to see how Kazmanovic does, uh, even if he doesn't play every game because of his age and because of his, you know, because obviously he'll get tired quite quickly. Either way, hopefully he can put in some good performances when we call upon him. Uh, elsewhere, we've had some offers coming in from people, um, as you can see, some of them were rejected, like Levitt and Olsen. But two people are going to be leaving the side come the end of the season. Abdul Razak is one of them. He's joining Metalist. For what was it, for 950k? There you go, 950k. Just again, he's he's fallen below what we need in the Premier League right now. Uh, just yeah, not a player cut out for this level. Where who? Where's Matalis play again? Is it Slovenia? No, in Ukraine. Uh, actually, they're one of the top teams in Ukraine. Thinking about it now, aren't they? They're just below like Shakhtar and stuff. So yeah, he'll you know he's he's moving to a decent level. Uh, but he just is not cut out for the Premier League in my, or at least in this Premier League side anyway. Maybe he could have played for another Premier League team. But for my team, no, he's not good enough anymore. So we had to leave. Decent feed to pick up, and we also got rid of uh, Citravinis, who I think we just signed last season, if I remember, or was it two years ago? No, it was just, we signed him just this season. But again, he, he he wasn't up to the grade. He was just here for backup. So I decided to try and get rid of him, and we picked up a little bit of money, as you can see, 16k initially, 145k over 24 months. You know, they, we've got. We're bringing in money then, and plus, if he's ever sold on, we're going to get any profit that could be possibly made. So overall, I think I'm happy with that deal as well, with all the clauses and stuff we've got added on. So that's been quite a long transfer thing to go through. A lot of it has been going into next season, though, so this means next season's transfer update will be a little bit shorter. But let's go into the league. And I think the last time I left you off was just after the Arsenal defeat. So, as you can see, we struggled a little bit after that. We lost 3-0 to Tottenham and 3-2 to Southampton, but these were teams above us at the time, and were always going to be tough games. After that, we drew 2-2 with Swindon, and as you can see, uh, slightly rotated the team around. I did play Dubois in this game, and we ended up drawing 2-2, which annoyed me because Swindon are not a good team. They're a team in the championship. They're a team that we should be beating. Um, so, for us to struggle there and only pick up a draw really annoyed me. Uh, we did then beat Manchester City at home 2-1, putting in a very spirited performance and showing the class that we showed last season when we played them in the cup. And look at that, we took the lead. They got one back. We took the lead again. You know, to come, you know, to, to stop their potential comeback showed really good team spirit. And overall, to beat Manchester City is such an achievement for any team, you know, 
and for a newly promoted team that's even bigger achievement so really good steps there really good progress and showed you know we can we do have the ability to beat top teams we've done it to Chelsea at home and we've done it to Manchester City at home this season after that drew 1-1 to Aston Villa not the best way to follow up a, a massive victory against Manchester City drawing against a team we really should be beating we did then beat um oh I just wait what Oh, I realised I skipped over. Sorry, I skipped over a lot of results. Let's go back. We did beat, after the FA Cup game, we beat Leicester before getting thumped 4-1 to Chelsea. We then lost to Swindon. I completely skipped over that because I looked at the wrong Swindon result. We lost to, so we lost to Swindon 1-0 in the FA Cup. Fourth round replay. We were just battered. I honest to God don't even know how. We played a strong enough team. We played a regular Premier League team and we got battered. We didn't deserve to go through and quite embarrassing really to lose to Swindon. Then we had these results. We beat City, drew to Villa, beat Sunderland, drew to Stoke. Uh, before, again, losing another losing against another team that realistically we should have been beating. To, lo to lose 2-1 to Hull, to Hull is three points thrown away, in my opinion. Uh, we, didn't, we then got a good draw against Liverpool at Anfield. So, overall, you know, a point there, a point away from home at a very tough place. We hardly got any of the ball as well, which isn't the way we normally play our football. We normally get a lot of the ball. So... You know, we were we had our backs against the wall for the majority of the game, but we showed again good team spirit to get the victory. Okay, we threw away a two goal lead, but with our defensive frailty shown in the past to get, you know, to at least hold on for that draw in the end is a positive thing. And following that up oh, that that's the wrong thing. I'm looking at the wrong thing. There you go. And following that up, we did get three wins on a row, beating teams that we again we should be beating, beating Reading, Not uh, Nottingham Forest and Wolves, or by um at least a one goal margin. And before we lost our last game of the season against Manchester United at Old Trafford, but again, that is something you would be expecting. Uh, we did um, miss a penalty, I think that is, and score an own goal from Schwab. Uh, we missed the penalty. He scored an own goal very late on. So the matter of fact is, if he'd have scored that penalty, it could have potentially been two-two. And if he hadn't scored that own goal, but again, look at the match stats. We would dominate at Old Trafford. Uh, so you know, to get a goal at least is something, I guess. <laughs> And then the last three games of the season, we won 4-3 against West Brom. Good result. We won 1-0 against Fulham. And we drew our last game of the season 2-2 to Newcastle. So, overall, you know, some decent results here. Some really good highlights like the victory against Manchester City and the victory against Chelsea. Of course, some down points as well are the fact that we lost to Swin uh, Swindon in the FA Cup 4th round replay. We should have beaten them in the FA Cup 4th round, let alone forcing it to a replay. And even at home, struggling to gain any sort of traction in the game. That was poor from us. Should have done a lot better there. But overall, you know, second half of the season was a lot more consistent. You know, we played poorly at stages, but we played well at stages as well. So if we can, again, push on to next season, show more consistency in the first half than we did this year, that would be a real positive thing. Um, so let's go into the squad and have a look at what we got. So, again, going into next season, we definitely need to improve on certain positions. Um... As you can see, Michael West has dropped even more below the grade quote, based on star ratings. Um, but overall, we played some really good highlights in the team. Olsen played incredibly well for a young 19-year-old. Actually played better than Kulubali. Uh So, you know, Olsen, I think he's going to be a decent player in the future. Uh, elsewhere, though, Levitt continued to step up. Played even better than he did in the Championship. Uh, I, I doubt. I wonder how long you know that England can avoid calling him up because he's playing so well. He's still in the 21 squad, at, even at the age of 22. Is he? Uh, no, he's not. Sorry, that's uh, under 21 to athlete. Sorry, but yeah, he's you know he played a lot for the under 21s. Hopefully soon he'll be getting called up to England because performing in performances with 7.22 in the Premier League in 28 games. Okay, he missed quite a lot because of I think he was injured. Uh, but you know, still goal, that goal scoring record and assist record, he's got to be noticed on the international stage very very soon. Uh, Richard Levitt. Easily, in my opinion, anyway, easily our best player in the side. Uh, Ger Gerard played very, very well for the team as well. 25 years of age, so again, in his prime, put in good performances. His best ever record, in fact, in his career. So, uh, hopefully, again, with one year behind, one year under his belt, he can put in even better performances next season. Now that he's, I think, slowly learning the lingo. He, he's actually fluent in English now. So, uh, you know, now he's got that and stuff. Hopefully, it just means he'll play a lot better in the second, for the start of next season. Because look at that. Look at his performances for the past five games. 7.94. He's been playing really well. Uh, elsewhere, I don't really think there's many other people I want to point out. Rizzo did very well, of course. I mentioned this last time. As you see, I've currently not got him in the selection. That's because I want to see if Waters and Chalaba can play well together. But I will be keeping Rizzo, I think. Uh, if there's someone better out there, I may actually sell Rizzo. 
Uh, but for now, Rizzo will be staying here and will be another option for the team. Du Bois played a few more games as a substitute appearance. As you can see, his star rating has gone up. So, again, slowly trying to push this guy into the team, see if we can get him some more games here and there, because that would be ideal for his development. Um, anyone else I really want to point out? Lingard did decently for us, I guess, for, his, uh, for, the, uh, for the first season with us. We'll have to see how he does next year. Um... Anyone else? I don't really think so. Kulubali did decently, I guess you could say. Uh, but apart from that, everyone else put in some half decent performances here and there. But they need to improve if we want to be pushing for Europe next year. Which, realistically to me, is going to be the target. It may not necessarily tell the board that's my target. But for me, that will be my target. Because ideally, I need, you know, I need to keep the job. I can't go out and win the Premier League because they'll sack me if I don't. Uh, so... Let's go into the awards and have a look at what, what who picked up what. So, player of the month for Peter Club once with Olsen, which is really, really good for the young lad. Um, Golden Glove went to, we'll start from the top, Golden Glove went to Courtois. So, you know, we're not going to get that. Footballer of the year went to Juan Mata. Uh, gold of the month, I don't think he ever picked that up. We came second actually once in September, so obviously we're not going to win gold this season. Manager of the month, we never picked it up at all. Manager of the year, we managed to pick up third. Clearly, they're recognising our achievement to take a team who are predicted to finish dead last with the smallest wage budget in the league and put them in eighth place. You know, deserve some recognition. A bit like um, Tony Pulis. Okay, he didn't do. You know, he didn't win the league with Crystal Palace, but because he did what he did with Crystal Palace, you have to recognise him on that award. You know, he's got to be rated somewhere. David Moyes still at Manchester United, still doing apparently well. <laughs> uh, player of the month really did that. So players player of the year went to Eden Hazard. Players team of the year. We didn't get any in that. It is the typical player, typical teams you'd expect in there. Actually, no Manchester City. Team. Oh, sorry, I dropped something. No Manchester City player, which surprised me. Uh, players, young player, we didn't. Actually, we came third in that. Richard Levitt getting noticed. So again, England have got to start noticing that. England have got to start calling him up. I think. Uh, top goal scorer, we didn't come anywhere in that. Voland, Lukaku, and Mata, three ex Chelsea players. Oh, not real Chelsea players in real life. And a young player of the month, backer picked it up twice, three times, sorry, four times, sorry. And Richard Levitt picked it up once. So I'm quite surprised he didn't pick up young player of the year. It may have been because actually he wasn't in the Premier League anymore. He didn't pick that up. I don't know. But <laughs> but those are the awards. Uh, that was the team I ran through the team. Uh, I don't think I spoke about what positions I want to improve. I think I did actually. I believe the positions I want to improve still yet again are probably the centre back, probably the right back role. Um... Again, one of the left attacking mid or right attacking mid, I'm going to be looking to prove there because, you know, the, the depth we've got in them positions. I mean, Lingard and Gerrard are great for now, but the people on the bench, Ibi and West, they're not good enough. We need to improve that. Uh, Selena, I'm not sure if he's going to be here for much longer. For now, I'm happy to keep him because he's very versatile. And plus, we don't actually have a backup striker. So, Selena would be a decent player just to have. Again, he's on quite a low wage bill in, relative, in relation to others. So, I'm happy to keep him for now. But uh, I think West may have to leave soon. I don't think his wage reflects how good he is to the team. So that's a shame. And financially, we're improving even more. Uh, I think we've got some new sponsorship deals and things like that. So, Or we're going to be getting some new sponsorship deals at the end of next season. So that's exciting. That should be a huge improvement and help finance the club even more. Our wage budget has jumped up even yet again. £635,000 a week now. So that is that is jumping up. Uh, any other landmarks I've yet to miss point out? Trend facilities were upgraded. Uh, what are they now at? I haven't. I didn't look at that. Our trend facilities are now uh, average corporate, average training, below average youth, um, basic junior coaching, and fairly basic youth recruitment. As you can see, currently we're at Selhurst Park as our stadium is being improved. And you know, I did say this that we would need to improve our stadium. We would need to expand it. And that's what's happening. So we're going to actually spend one whole season at Selhurst Park with Crystal Palace. Um, we'll be moving back into our 18,554 capacity stadium of Epsleet Stadium. We'll be moving back there, uh, I like I say, next season. So one whole year before we can return home or, you know, our, our natural home. So it might be difficult next season because basically we're playing two away games. But hopefully that won't become too much of a factor. Uh, so I think this is going to be it for now. I don't think there's anything else I really need to talk about. Um, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything? I don't particularly think so. So yeah, I'm going to end this off here. I'm going to say, no, this is it for now. Uh, Tactic-wise, we'll have a look at tactic, I guess. We can finish it off there. Actually, no, there was one more thing I wanted to look at. I just took my memory. Tactic-wise, we've, we've changed it a little now. 
Uh, as you can see, we've still got the 4 2 3 1, but I've added a lot more team instructions in. We've now got run up defense, play wider, get stuck in, stick to position, shorter passing, retain possession, and drop deeper. I was trying to, of course, as you can see, put a few more defensive things in place because defensively we're so poor drop deeper was just because you know we have such a big gap between the defense midfielders and the defenders i thought if they dropped a little deeper it may help cover any any people trying to exploit you know our lack of cover and defense uh get stuck in of course that's another thing stick to positions that again could sort of relate to the back four uh short passing again i don't want them punting in forward from the defense that's something as well i think i've got a few player instructions on uh actually no i don't so yeah, that's just a few team instructions. So, you know, the tactic is developing a little now, being in the Premier League. We do have to step it up in terms of our tactic, how in-depth it is. And so I think that did help and benefit towards our second half of the season. Uh, so that you know, shows it was working. And there was the one thing I wanted to look at was our salary per annum and our average attendance. So average attendance was 11,000 coming into the season. That's still about half of Hull, who were 19th lowest. Uh, average attendance by capacity, though, we were filling it, you know, to the pretty much max every game. So now... Moving to Selhurst Park, we can put more people in, which hopefully we will, which will again give us more money. But then moving next season, we'll have a bigger stadium as well after that. How many sellouts do we have? Nine, most in the league. Uh, salary per annum, we are now not the lowest. We're actually the 18th lowest above Reading and Sunderland. Uh, did Sunderland, where are Sunderland actually? They get relegated. They did get relegated. So, yeah, they couldn't cut the grade in the end. But Reading did. Reading stayed up. They were in 13th. So, yeah, we're not the lowest in the league, which shows the club is actually growing at a, a rate that is surprising me. Because typically when you move up to the Premier League, you, you, you have quite a low wage for at least two, three seasons. But my board are clearly giving me a lot of money and we're clearly getting a lot of money from somewhere. I don't know where, but the board are willing to allow me to splash the cash on certain players and certain wages and stuff like that. So maybe next year, I imagine, well, I'll probably be somewhere around this Fulham level, you know, near the 40 million mark or maybe 30 million mark. Because we're just growing at such an incredible rate and it's reflecting on the league positions, though. You know, we've, we're eighth. Place, you know, very close to a European spot. Maybe next year, go for a cup, go for Europe. That would be great. You know, try and get into Europe and try and win a cup. That would be an ideal season. So, until then, guys, until six months into our second season in the Premier League, peace out.